In this video, I'm going to show you how to use leader lines to create a neatly formatted table of contents. Now, this method would only be of use if you were creating your uh, table of contents or your list of figures manually. Now, our other videos show you how to uh, create your captions and headings such that you can update the table of contents automatically using the update field function. But this video assumes you're not doing that. This video assumes that you've uh, created your table of contents manually. If you create your table of contents manually, one of the key uh, requirements is that the page numbers on the right-hand side must match up evenly. And so this would be a good example of part of a table of contents. You have the headings on this side, you have the page numbers on this side lining up smoothly. Um, the different heading types line up uh, under different indentations. So these level two headings are indented. A level three heading is indented even further. So let me quickly show you how to use leader lines to achieve this. Let's say you start with this. You know what your sections are called. Maybe on a separate piece of paper you have your page numbers written out. To create leader lines, you highlight the text that you want uh, to use them on. So here I'm just going to highlight the headings that I've identified. Now, there are two ways to do this. You can either right click and then click paragraph, and it brings up the paragraph uh, window, or you can go under the paragraph bar under the home tab and click this button, which opens up the full dialog box. And again, the effect is the same either way. So again, pull up the, the paragraph dialog box. Now click tabs in the bottom left. In this spot right here where it says tab stop position, you're going to choose to add a tab stop position. Now you can change this, but a good baseline would be six, which is to say six inches. You could do 6.25 inches. You could do 6.5 inches. Those would be fine. But for this example, I'll just show you what six inches would do. Now under alignment, we're going to choose right, and I'll show you why in a moment. And then under leader, we're going to use this option with the dots, which will create those uh, dot lines that go across the page so that the reader's eye can track which page number lines up with which heading. So again, change this to 6 or 6.25 or 6.5. Change the alignment to right. Change the leader to option 2 with the dots. Then click set and OK. Now what that means is whenever you push the tab button in this section of text that we just highlighted, you'll create leader lines that end at six inches across the page. And you'll see it's going to line up right with the six up here. So if I just push the button tab, if I'm, if I'm putting the cursor right to the, directly to the right of my heading, I push tab, it creates the leader line, and then I can type in a page number. And so let's just imagine these page numbers are uh, Roman numerals, and then these ones are going to be the Arabic numerals starting with one, this might be page two, so on and so forth. Okay, now another thing to point out is you could also have your page numbers right here on the left. So it could be, you could place the page number right next to the heading, and then you just put the cursor in front of the page number, press tab, it would have the same effect. It would push the page number across to the other side, and it would also add the leader lines. Um, one other thing to note about this is that if you then want to indent your subsections that they line up evenly and they're differentiated from one another, you cannot use the tab button, because if you push the tab button, which you might normally use to indent, it will create a leader line across the page, and that's not what we want. So instead, we'd have to manually do this with the space bar. And as a good rule of thumb, you could say that you do seven spaces for each heading type. So for example, I'll put the cursor in front of it, and I'll push space seven times. I'll do the same for this heading. And then for this one, I would do seven, and then another seven, so 14 total. And again, the point is that way each heading type lines up neatly. And you can be sure that they're all the same because they're all 7 or 14 or 21, as the case may be. 
And the reason you may recall in the paragraph tab we, we chose the right alignment is precisely so that these numbers line up neatly on the right. Um, if you did a left alignment, they would be all over the place and you'd have to kind of manually rearrange them to line them up. But this way we can ensure that they line up smoothly on the right hand side. The same method would work for your list of tables, your list of figures, um, and it's, it's a good tool to have in your toolkit.